So I want to welcome to the stage Jessica Lewis. Okay. Great. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Nervous? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I. I don't like being up here too long. Um, <laughs> so it's Saturday. You're in Bermuda. Normally you're in Canada. Yep. So tell, tell me, typically on a Saturday, I mean, you should be training right now. Yeah, right? I, but I, you're here taking the weekend off, relaxing. Like, is your coach upset that you're not training? What would you typically be doing on a Saturday for training? Um, well, I actually don't have the weekend off. I was at the track this morning. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I did a 10K push this morning just to wow. get... Yeah, on the track and push around. Um, I have another session tomorrow morning, so still keeping at it. Um, so basically for training, I'm in the gym three days a week, lifting weights with a personal trainer, working on like muscle mass and strength. Uh, and then depending on what my coach wants to do and what days he wants me to train, um, I'm in my track chair doing different pushes. Right, right. Yeah. So this is, I guess, a typical training session like we were talking about. So here's your coach. T tell me a little bit, a little bit about him. Um, his name's Ken Tom, and he's um, a Canadian coach. And um, he came to Bermuda a few years ago with his son, who also races, Curtis Tom. And they kind of did an expo at Windreach. And so that's how I was introduced to him. And he offered to take me on as Bermuda didn't have a wheelchair coach. So this is your childhood. I mean, you grew up in Bermuda. Actually, very, actually had a very typical Bermudian childhood. I mean, it was sports. It was yeah. going to BHS. It was, you know... Any typical kid's lifestyle, it just you did things a little bit differently after hours, I guess is the best yeah. way to think about it. You know, you, you grew up here, um, and really the sort of the sense of the determination that sort of pushed you from, you know, I guess, just sort of saying, okay, I'm just going to go to school, yeah. but there's something else that sort of is clicking with you now, and sort of, I guess that came from a trip that you went to uh, Beijing four years ago. Um, I mean, I think I've always been a determined person right from the start. Uh, when I was born, uh, I was born two months premature, and um, I had limited movement in my legs, and I was born with a disability known as diastomatomyelia, which is a congenital disorder in which a bone spur split my spine in half. Um, so I did have a little bit of movement, like I said, when I was born, and about six weeks old, uh, my mother noticed that the movement was deteriorating. So we went to Boston for um, a surgery, and I had surgery to remove the bone spur. And I only weighed about eight pounds, so they weren't really too sure uh, if they should do it. And after that surgery, I just had complication after complication. And I was in the hospital for about 56 days and had over 26 hours of surgery um, with a hospital bill of $160,000 at the end of it. Um, and I was released from the hospital then. And, kind of just always fought my whole life. Um, then I, had, I was lucky that I didn't have to really have any surgeries um, after that until I was about nine when I had rods put in my back to straighten, like, straighten my spine and support it. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up breaking those within the year. So, <laughs> um, But I think that's kind of helped me um, you know, push through life and get over things. Um, and like my family have always been so supportive of me and they never see my disability, you know. They never told me I couldn't do something. And one of my favorite stories was, I remember I wanted to start playing volleyball one time. And I went to my mom and I was like, can I play volleyball? And she told me no, but the only reason that she told me no was because I was already involved with ballet and horseback riding and swimming. So there wasn't really much time for me to be in volleyball. Yeah. Um, and then she also helped me become determined and achieve something and be dependent, independent, sorry. Um, one of the, another story that's one of my favorites is I wanted to get from the chair, in, from the floor into my wheelchair. And instead of her just picking me up and doing it for me, uh, she told me to figure it out. And I think a lot of people could, <laughs> I think a lot of people could see that as being mean. But you know, I thank her for it. Because to this day, if she didn't let me figure it out, I wouldn't be able to do it. And like when I fell at school last week, because I just didn't see a bump and just went, um, I was able to get back in my chair. And if she didn't teach me that, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> so
so you, me you mentioned you're at school last week. I mean, do you feel that you have, there's sort of the two Jessicas, there's Jessica, the Paralympian, and then yeah. there's Jessica, the, 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 you know, the university student, like, I gotta study, I've gotta, you know, do, do, how do you sort of manage the two? Is it, are they the same person, or do you feel that it is sort of, that's my game face that I put on for that, and? Um, I, I do think that they are kind of different, in a way, you know, you have track where you have to be so focused on one thing and, and just push through obstacles that are put in your way. Um, whereas school, you, I have to be like a regular student and I'm trying to find that balance of training and school. And so I'm taking light course loads at, at university um, just to find the right balance. It's kind of the reality of being a student and yeah. then also having this other life. Yeah. So it's, it's an amazing thing. Um, so. I mean, the picture here is your time at Winreach, uh, and Winreach really was, or your relationship with Winreach has, has been, you know, through all your teenage years yep. and before, but also the people at Winreach were one of the reasons you ended up in Beijing. So tell me about four years ago. I think I've got a picture here. Here's a picture um, of uh, you and your mom in Beijing, I think. Yeah. And tell me about that trip. So I was fortunate enough with two other people to be sent uh, to spectate at the Beijing Paralympics by the um, Bermuda Paralympic Association. And so that trip was basically to see the level of sport you needed to be in to compete at one of these games. And so it was very instrumental in like, making me want to be there. Um, I wanted to be on the other side of it. I didn't want to be one of the 80,000 in the stand. You know, I wanted to be on the other side and to be able to compete at one of these games and just show the world you know, people with disabilities can do these things. And um, it was just an incredible experience. I don't really know how to explain it. Did you go there expecting one sport to really thrill you and then you sort of saw track and that was it? Like, or what was sort of that aha um, for you? I'm, I mean, like, I've, I've done other sports, um, but since Bermuda's so small, we weren't really able to have like a team sport. So I had to choose an individual sport. And I had actually started track uh, two years before Beijing, just kind of for recreation and seeing what it was all about. Um, so when I went there, and this was the stadium, um, when I went there, it kind of just captivated me. You know, this is the sport that I wanted to do. And the whole purpose of this trip was to go there and pick a sport and come back and start training. So that's exactly what I did. And that was four years ago. And yeah. now, and it didn't happen, like, you didn't come back from Beijing and like the second day you got back, you were suddenly doing it. There was a bit of a, yeah. a period. And um, I mean, I, I had borrowed a chair from my coach just to kind of see if I really wanted to be in the sport. And I think my love for it just grew. And I eventually got my own chair in 2010, and the chairs are specifically made to each person. Yep. So this is, yeah, this my is, chair right here. This is the machine here. Let me go grab it, because it's okay. really cool. <laughs> yeah. So each chair is like specifically designed to the person. Um, and there's different ways that you can sit in the chair. You can either, if you're, depending on, um, how well you can bend your legs. So I kneel, as you can see in the picture, you can't really see where my legs are. But my legs are, my feet kind of come down in here. Um, so I kneel and then I lean forward and push around. Um, and then if you're not able to bend your legs, then you can have a foot plate put in here um, so your feet can sit there. And carbon fiber wheels. I mean, yeah. when you get to the start line, are you like checking out the muscles on the other competitors or are you checking out their <laughs> wheels? Are you like, <laughs> are you kind of like, I'll trade your pink slips? Like, you know, just like a, what is, um, how do you, what, I guess, what goes through your mind when you're on the starting line? There's you just before you went yeah. on. So, the amazing shot. Yeah, that picture, um, when they called my name out on that screen, you know, yeah. that was really the moment that I was like, oh my gracious, I'm here in front of 80,000 people about to race with, and I was one of the top eight in the world that were there. And so, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, I, I went into this competition knowing that, you know, I was kind of like the underdog. I've only really been racing um, a year, whereas the others have been racing, you know, 12 plus years. Um, so I, this is definitely the beginning of my future. You know, I knew that I would come last. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that the medal was beyond my reach. And I knew that I didn't have the necessary body mass or the 
muscle uh, mass, which is what I'm really working on uh, this season, is building up a lot of muscle. Um, but I knew that I would put everything I had into it. You know, I knew that I had trained so hard to get to this moment, and I was just going to do everything I could to get across that finish line. Um, and I think I did a really good job, so I was really happy. <laughs> Your mom's an incredible woman as yes, well. She is. I mean, you guys were on the plane heading over to London, and who was more excited? I mean, re I mean, was she just kind of like, um, it was, was it part of her as well, like that excitement? Yeah, I, th I think I was more excited, but I think she was more proud. You know, proud that I had made it to this level on my own. Um, for Bermuda, like, since it's so small, we were able to get a wild card, but me and my coach were like, no, I'm not going on a wild card, I'm gonna go knowing that I got the standards and I earned the right to be there. Um, and so, <laughs> um, so I, think, I think having that belief in me really helped me um, commit to the sport and just know that someone had saw the potential in me. And he actually gave us, I still have it on my wrist today, um, he gave us London 2012 bracelets, just little bracelets that say London 2012. And he gave that to me and the rest of his athletes. And that was kind of our incentive. That was what we have to wear every day to see our goal. This is what I wanted to achieve. And I had surgery um, in April of 2011. And it was very, very minor. I was awake during the surgery. And it actually resulted in a lot of nerve pain that I had for over a year. Um, so I was really training through level 10 back pain, and a lot of sessions ended up with me in tears, but I knew that if I did this session, it would bring me closer to London. You know, I think if London wasn't there, then I don't know how I would have got through the back pain, but um, just kept pushing through, and you know, my coach believed in me, and he encouraged me, and he said, I know it's hurting, but try one more set, and when it got to the point where I really couldn't do it, he understood, but he kind of pushed me to my limits. Right. And I think that's really one of the reasons that I was there. I think there's working. a sense that, that, that coaches who are training Paralympians, that maybe they're softer on the athletes than they would be on a, uh, you know, a traditional athlete. It, what, what do you think of that? To Definitely not. No? <laughs> Definitely not. They have no sympathy? Do you think they nope. push you harder? Um, I, I think they do. Um, I mean, you look at an Olympian, and they train really hard. And then you look at a Paralympian. They train just as hard as an Olympian does. And I think, I don't really like to say it, but I think that we have to overcome something first before we start training. So I think our drive is a little bit more because we have to overcome like a disability or a loss of a limb or something um, and just keep pushing and training and fight through pain. Um, so I, I, I think that coaches that coach people with disabilities have a more understanding of you know, how our bodies work and how we suffer through pain or, and just kind of being there for moral support as well, which a lot of coaches are there for as well. And my coach really helped me through the back pain as well. Yeah, he's an incredible guy. Yeah, he is. So you've got four more years with him training before Rio? Yes. What are the goals that you guys have set between now and then? Um, I'm looking forward to representing Bermuda again at um, the IPC uh, World Athletics next year, uh, which are held in Lyon, France in... July, I think it's the end of July. Um, and then hopefully Para Pan American Games in 2015 in Toronto. And then hopefully 2016 Rio Paralympic Games. And you've got specific times you're trying to get to. Like yes. You're trying to get, basically your benchmark or your goals are certain times. Yeah. Do you have any idea what other people's times are? I mean, did this give you a real idea of like where the Chinese are with their times when you see them in competition? Um, I mean, like looking at my 100 meter rates um, that I did in London, my personal best is an 1851, and the girls were running about a 16, so I have some work to do, and, um, but I'm really looking forward to keep training and getting better and better. Excellent. Yeah. What do you need to be able to get closer to you know, finishing in the top three? Is it, besides training, like, yeah. is, there, is there dollars involved? Is there? Um, definitely. Um, we go to a lot of races during the racing season, which starts in April until like August. Um, so we go to a lot of different meets around. Um, this summer we did probably more than 10 
um, just qualifying meets, and that involved, you know, travel, air travel, hotels. Um, if we were if we were driving, um, we did a few eight-hour drives to a race. Um, so renting a car and then the hotel when we got there, um, and then also the racing chairs aren't really that cheap. No. Um, so the frame of the chair is probably twenty-five hundred dollars, and then you add in the carbon fiber wheels, which um, are about the same price. Yeah. So they're very uh, expensive. And typically, a racing chair will last for five years for a female, and probably about three for males. Um, so I'll be looking forward to getting a new chair um, 2014. We usually like to get it um, a few years before a big competition, just to make sure all the kinks are worked out and um, it fits us perfectly. So hopefully 2014. I, I know there's a room full of people here that are dying to support you. So that's <laughs> good pitch. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the last question, okay. and it's the million dollar question at these events. <laughs> what is the idea that you want to spread? What do you hope that you kids take away from TED? Um, I think, you know, I'm a Paralympian right now, and that's something that no one can take away from me. I earned the right to that title, and I think I just would like to share that everybody can dream big. They can dream as big as they want, and they can achieve it. You know, if you're willing to put in the time, the dedication, and the hard work, you can achieve anything you want. And I really thank Ted for allowing me this opportunity to express that. And I just really hope that people understand that they can achieve anything they desire, they dream, and they vision. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you. Jessica Lewis. 2016. Great job. Good job. Thank you.